everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. And in this video we are going to make a pouch for the peacock blanket. So this is part of the series of the peacock blanket cal or do it yourself cal as I have called it. So Emma came up with the idea of making a pouch to keep her blanket in but of course you can also put a cushion in her in it and then you have a nice cushion. So to make this project I'm going to be using the leftovers from my peacock blanket but of course you can use whichever colours you fancy but I have listed them in the pattern for each row and round so do go and have a look at that. You will of course also need your hook that you usually use for decay. I have scissors of course, a darning needle, a tape measure because if you're using a certain cushion inner you will have to just make sure your panels have the right size and I've got some stitch markers here as well to help me count and things like that. You will also need two buttons you could also use toggles but I can't find mine at the moment so it's buttons for now and I have some thread and a thinner needle that will go through the holes of my buttons so that I can attach that to the pouch. So inside this cushion you're either going to place a cushion inner. This is a cushion inner of 40 by 40 uh, centimeters. It's a standard size so you can find those anywhere. They're quite inexpensive or of course the actual blanket and of course you'll have to find a way of folding it so it fits the uh, 40 by 40 pouch that you are making for it. So for the square side of the cushion cover I am going to refer you to the original Ophelia Square or the original Peacock Square video that I did. So you are going to be starting by doing a normal Peacock Square. So you start with the circle and doing your half double crochets, corners and then the boxes and then the double crochet round. So that is your first initial start and then we repeated the double crochet, boxes, double crochet, double crochet, boxes, double crochet, double crochet, boxes, double crochet. So this is how you continue all the way. And of course you are also doing that skipping one stitch in that certain place that we skip them here as you are used to from making the squares. But when Emma got to round 13, so that's the empire here, she found that the corners were turning up slightly. So to sort that out, she just added that missed stitch back in and all was fine. So that was really good as well. Another tip I want to give you for this square, and you might just see it here, is it did slant a little bit. Now that's to do with tension um, and it might not slant for you, but just to make sure, make sure you turn your square once in a while so that you are working in the opposite direction from where you're doing the last round and that way your square won't slant in a certain direction. Okay, so you're going to do 19 rounds. So you keep doing, basically it's two rows of double crochet and a boxer's row, two rows of double crochet and a boxer's row. So you keep on doing these rounds until you get to round 19 and because you've added a stitch here you will end round 19 with 57 stitches and these are the 57 stitches that you need for the width of your square but also for the next panel the panel that we are going to make for the back which will be a panel in rows and that's where we're going to use those 57 stitches as well okay so the color order is on the pattern as well as the amount of stitches you should have in each round so here I have finished in a row of double crochets and that's perfect because that gave me the exact amount of stitches that I needed to attach it to my back panel which is made up of rows. So let's get started on doing the rows. 
So for the second panel, we are going to be doing rows. So let me show you how to go about doing these. So row one, I have used proper purple. So let's make a slip knot, insert your hook, and we're going to chain 57. So yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 55, 56 and 57. So this is now my starting chain and it is just about 33 centimeters or 13 inches. Now that's not wide enough for our cushion, but it will grow as we put the first row of stitches on there. So now for row one, we're going to treat the 57th stitch, of course, as the first location, but we've got nothing to work with. So what we're going to do is a chain of two and this chain is going to count as our first double crochet and it will give us the height that we need for the rest of the row, which will be double crochets in each chain along. So you yarn over and you're not going to use the first two because those are your double crochets. You're not going to use the third one because of course that one is the location for your first double crochet. So into the fourth chain, you're going to place your first double crochet. Then yarn over again into the next chain for your next double crochet. And you are going to continue like this. And when you get to the end, you will have 57 chains on top of your work. And of course, we are also counting this as a stitch. So this V here counts as well. And of course, if you want to mark that first one with a stitch marker, please do so. Stitch markers are your best friend to make sure you don't lose stitches on your sides. I will see you at the end of the row. So I have just managed to insert into that last chain there. We all know how stubborn that one can be. And this now here is our first row done. So row one now has a length of 37 centimeters or 14 and a half inches. And I think for me that's wide enough. Certainly if I'm going to put the blanket in, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I like also uh, to have a cushion cover that fits snugly around my inner, so this will be perfect. Now, of course, I finished the stitch, but I should not have done that. So I'm going to go a step back because for row two, we are going to be using the next color. So let me cut off this color here. I now have gold and I'm going to pull through the gold as if I was just finishing my stitch. There we go. And row two is chain one. So from now on, we're going to do a chain one. This doesn't count and you don't need to take this into account at all, but it's just so that it allows us to turn. And now we're going to do a double crochet straight away. So you're straight away doing the proper stitch. And of course, this V here will be the one that if you do um, mark it, this is the one that you will need to mark. So there we go. So once you've marked your stitch, you can get on with the rest of the row and that is doing double crochets in each stitch along the row. So I'm going to get on and do my double crochets. So I'm nearly at the end of my row. And here, of course, I've got my stitch marker in that last stitch, which I need to do. So that's been a great reminder. So take that one out and I'm going to try and find the two strands of the V that I need to find here. There we go. And I do my last stitch. There we are. So this is row two. Now for row three, and of course, yes, I'm not used to it yet. Um, undo that last pull through and then take your next color. And that's going to be petrol. 
So let's pull that one through. And we're going to get started with a chain one. So again, it doesn't count, but we just use it to turn. And now we're going to get started with a double crochet in that same first stitch. There we go. And yeah, let me just mark that one here because it was handy. So you don't have to you know, guess which one is your last stitch. And of course this time, so we've done two rows of double crochets, this time we're doing boxes. So chain one, skip one, and in the next stitch we do a double crochet. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. And this is how you are going to continue until the end of the row. So I'm nearly at the end of the row here. So chain one, skip one, and indeed skip one. And there is my marked stitch. So that's the one I need to use for my double crochet. There we go. And of course, yeah, don't finish your stitch, but you're going to pull through the next color. So now we have done a row of double crochets, a row of double crochets and a row of boxes. And so this is how we are going to continue. So you're going to do two rows of double crochets and then a row of boxes. So now for row four, we're going to use green gauge. And of course I am pulling through my yarn and I'm doing my chain one, turn, and now to get started, we do a double crochet in the first stitch. There we go. And place your stitch marker. Voila. And then because we have to deal with boxes, we are now going to place a double crochet around the chain space. Then the next one, we place it into the double crochet. The next one around the chain space, the next one into the double crochet. Now the reason why we do that is so it would look more like a row of double crochets and not a row of dainty clusters. Um, because of course, you know, when they sort of bunch together here, you will get a different look. So basically now you will be starting a repeat. And the repeat will be that you will be doing a row of double crochets a row of boxes and a row of double crochets on top of the boxes. So when you have finished this row, you will then do another row of double crochets, then you do a row of boxes. Two rows of double crochets and a row of boxes, essentially. Okay, but you just need to be aware of the locations, of course, for your double crochets when you're dealing with boxes underneath. So I am now going to continue my pattern here of doing rows, doing double crochet rows, doing boxes rows. I have the list I can follow for the colors and I will meet you when you have finished your panel. Now for the cushion, for the panel of the cushion, you will need to do 38 rows and you will end in two rows of double crochets, so here. So at the end of the panel, you will also have two rows of double crochets. So I will see you when you have finished your panel. So I have continued on from my first few rows that I did here, and I now have finished my panel of rows for my cushion cover. So I'm really pleased with it. I did blind dip and it looks really nice. So there we go. So now I am going to do the part for the flap. So let's cut this one off. So in your end, so keep, keep on top of that. Okay. And we will get started on the flap for our cushion cover.
to make the flap I'm going to have to refer you to the start of this video where I show you how to make the back panel in the rows because to be honest it is exactly the same thing that we are going to be doing except we are just going to be doing 12 rows and those 12 rows will be long enough or tall enough wide enough to uh, be able to uh, serve as a flap to close up our cushion cover or pouch. So here we go. I am doing it really quickly here, but just go back to the start of the second part of this video where we are doing the back panel. So I have now done my 11 rows uh, of my flap. And I thought that was wide enough for ensuring that it would stay closed. So now that I've just finished my last stitch there, well, I didn't do the last pull through. Uh, I'm going to go to the uh, teal color and I'm going to do another row of double crochets. But this time I'm going to make loops while I'm doing the row so that when I attach my buttons, I can use those loops to close the flap. So same thing again, pull through, chain one, and we're going to place double crochets in every stitch. And to start with, we are going to create 15 double crochets. So that's three, 14 and 15. So I'm thinking this is far enough in um, for a button to be to keep the flap closed. But of course, I only found these two buttons. Now, if you have toggles, if you have more buttons, you will have the possibility of making more loops as well. So that will be useful. Also, I'm saying do seven chains for the loop. five six seven then go back to your double crochet go in it anywhere you can go into it that's fine and do a slip stitch so this has now made a loop as you can tell look but of course you're going to have to test this on your button and for me this works although maybe I could have it a little bit smaller. So let's see what happens when we do six chains. So although I'm suggesting seven chains, check it with your button, okay? Because otherwise you might end up having to redo this if your buttons are not going to stay closed. If you have bigger buttons, you'll have to make bigger loops. And I think this one is possibly better because it's a little bit more difficult to get through. So I'm going to do six chains. Then I'm going to do another 27 stitches. So work out, depending on how many buttons you have, work out their position. Okay, so what I did, 15 stitches in, that's where my, my um, loops are going to be. And then in between here, I'm going to have 27 stitches left over. So you're working with 57 stitches. So see how you would work out your distances. Of course, taking into account how many buttons you have. Okay. So let me do the rest of this row. So I've just finished that last row with the loops, cut off the yarn. I'm going to have to sew in this end as well. I've sewn in all the other ends. And now, of course, it is time to start the construction of our cushion cover or pouch. So we take the panel with the square and we are going to attach the flap to it so making sure you have the good sides on the outside and the bad sides on the inside we are going to use black to join these two together and starting with a slip knot insert your hook and the idea is to use inner loop 
single crochet so we've got a little bit of a ridge so if we have a single crochet we'll have a little ridge that we can then later on use for the border but of course here we are dealing with the starting chain so you'll only have one uh, strand to pick up which is fine go in there into your chain space and start with doing a single crochet and then here you'll be picking up the leftover loop and then from here onwards find the first V, find the back loop or the inner loop and you pick that one up. So that way you will still have a loop resting on this side here and you will be using one. And then here, of course, yeah, this is the way it is um, because, of course, we're dealing with a chain there. And this will give us as well a nice base to work on should you want to put a border around your pouch and there we go so this is what it looks like so i have just finished attaching the flap to the front of the pouch so this is it opened up and so it closes nicely as well. So I finished here. I put a second um, single crochet in that same stitch because I'm going to have to make a little corner here in a minute as well. So now I'm opening up the flap and now I am bringing in my striped one. But of course, I'm going to make sure that it's the same colors on this side as there is here so that when I close it, there's no difference. You know, it should be reasonably the same. And so now I'm going to start from here and I'm going to crochet along the sides here, the sides and here, the sides So three sides. So now I'm working with this, but also with this. So again, I'm going to try and find a good thing to pick up. Maybe. Yeah. Do you know what? These are two strands. I'm going to keep it like that. And I'm going to go into the chain space there and do a single crochet. You just need to get started and that's fine. So, of course, here we're going to have to deal with a panel where there are V's. And I know you can hardly see them, but you know they are there. And then, of course, with a panel with no V's. So I'm going to let the V's on this panel lead me to where I have to put my stitches on this panel here. So here... Let me find the first one. So this is the strand there. So I'm going to be picking up a strand or two. Going into the stitch here. And then here, trying to... Ah, oh, sewn in an end there as well. <laughs> Not easy. There we go. I've picked up a strand. That will be okay. So then, where is my next one? About there. So then try and find a location that is close to yes this is definitely where I've yeah sewn in an end there we go voila so I have to admit this cushion was Emma's idea well pouch I keep calling it a cushion because of course I'm going to use it as a cushion because I need to keep my peacock out on display for you guys so that's why I'm going to be putting a cushion in and that's why I'm saying cushion all the time but I think Emma is wanting to uh, put the peacock in there so of course once this project is finished I'm going to give this to her because it was her idea uh, she made most of the squares well she made all the squares for the blanket we put it together together we have uh you know i've i've done bits she's done bits we've both worked on the pattern um she was the one who uh wrote the pattern for this one line by line counting every row how many double crochets or boxes you had oh my goodness she did so well so yes it was a lovely collaboration and i hope you have enjoyed creating with us we've certainly enjoyed it um and yeah this pouch is a nice addition to it and of course we came up with it because we had some yarn left over so hopefully you will have some left over as well and you will be 
able to make a few more things with it. And this is what it is going to be looking like. And this will give me a nice sort of um, edge, a nice base to start working on the border in a moment. So I will now meet you when you have done the three sides. And I'm suggesting in the corners for you to do like um, two single crochets, a chain and two single crochets. If that's not enough, do more stitches, do more chains, but in the corners that should make a nice corner. So I will see you when you have gone around all the three sides and you are here. Okay, so I managed to complete the round of single crochets all around my cushion cover here or pouch. Um, and I have to say it tallied up quite nicely. I think there was one side where I had to, you know, sort of fudge a stitch. But to be honest, it wasn't all that bad. So just taking a little bit of time will be a great help there. Then I did a slip stitch here and I started doing a corner. So I decided that this stitch here would be my corner. It was sort of the outermost there. So I've done two half double crochets, two chains and two half double crochets into that stitch. And then I started doing half double crochets into my single crochets. So and while I did that round, I kept on doing my two half double crochets, two chains and two half double crochets in sort of the designated corner once. And this seemed to have worked really well. And now I am finishing my round of half double crochets. But of course, in the meantime, as you can probably tell, I was impatient. And I have tried to put, let's do a slip stitch, of course I have tried to put the cushion inside. So I know that Emma is wanting to put her blanket in here, which is fine, of course. And so if you want to put your blanket in there as well, that's great. Whatever size this is, is fine. Um, but for the cushion, as you can tell, it's quite... It's quite neat. I like it. I like a tight cushion cover. So there we go. So here we have the finished border. And then I've put the cushion inside. Fits nicely. And then I have also sewn um, the buttons. So there we are. This is the finished cushion. And of course also the finished pouch. So So should you want to put the blanket in there, it fits nicely as well, as you can see. And I hope you like this video, I hope you like this project and that you will make it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!